everybody is big and I have a short video, but bear with me. It's going to be kind of noisy because I'm trying to make a point here. Earlier today, my daughter and I were um, driving about. We were exercising and everything, and we kept passing by a bunch of communities that were primarily Hispanically owned or um, owned by Asians, and I thought, wow, why is that? And I pointed out to my daughter, it's that way because they have unified. They've unified um, together. They've unified their money. They've unified in every way, shape, or form. And I'm going to point around and let you see that all of these businesses, even from way down the block here, it's like two blocks down, is primarily owned by Asians and Hispanics. Now, or Latin people, I should be politically correct. The point that I'm making is they were able to do that, as I said before, because they are organized and they unify. There is not one, not one black-owned store from two blocks, and it's very large blocks, two blocks. When I first moved here to Riverside, this whole area was probably predominantly white-owned. There was, you know, a huge shopping uh, center uh, full of um, white-owned businesses. Now, on this same block, there are two super large Latin-owned uh, grocery store, like full-on grocery store. I'm not talking about food stand. I'm talking about a gigantic store, like a regular store. Two of them on the same block, and both of those stores are completely full with people shopping. Why? Because they shop with each other. They get it, and you know what? I'm not mad because if you go in any one of those stores, you're not going to see anybody else but their own working in the stores. You're just not going to. And you know what? That's what they can do because they have unified, and they can say, I don't want to hire you. I'm going to hire my own. That's the way it's supposed to work. So the point of this video is, I mean, if we, we being black people, unify and put our money together, we can do this too. It's not hard. We just have to be loyal to each other and do what we need to do to bring our community up where it's supposed to be. All right, so I hope that I was informational and shed some light on the situation. But have a great evening. All right, we're in the second hour. This is Donovan Sadiq and my compadre, the infamous Demetra Kay from the Demetra Kay Show. Yeah. Uh, great first hour. I really enjoyed it. Um, great show on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You're always doing great things. Your message is getting out there. We are now in syndication, which is really, really good. You're going to get your show out there. Um, let me ask you this, Suju, just real quick. Mm -hmm. What is the premise of your show and what's it about? Because a lot of people, not a lot of people, but some people hate on your show for the simple <laughs> fact that you keep talking black unity, uh, community, black awareness, and uh, you know things like that. So why, you know, what? Well, in a nutshell, you just hit the nail on the head. That's what it's about. It's about, and see, and this is what I like for anybody who is not black. I mean, I always welcome everybody to listen. I often have uh, people who are not black come in and chime in on the show mm -hmm. and stuff like that. This is not about being against anybody who is not black. Mm -hmm. This is about promoting this being my show about uh, promoting um, blackness and uh, you know self love, black love, black unity, uh, group economics, just the mm -hmm. whole nine that every other race does unapologetically, and even they do it without even thinking about it. Right. And so I'm just trying to you know spur a conversation and come up with solutions that can help make us better. Hmm. Plain and simple. So it's not, you know, a lot of times people take offense to that, but it's not even with just with me. It's with anything that's black, that's pro-black, people deem it to be uh, anti-white. Right, right. And um, that's not what it is. Right, so we can find your show on Sundays. Sundays at 3 p.m. Pacific time on and Facebook. On Facebook. Okay. And it's live. It's live. It's live. So, so if you want to ask me questions, right. you can. Okay, so on, but when it's live, basically it's uh, you and the raw, mm -hmm. and then we can catch you on your uh, YouTube page if you miss it, and uh, you know we, parts of it are, are oh, yeah. recorded and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So that's good too. So I just kind of want to give give the distinction because sometimes people think because you're on Love in the Skin I'm in, and some of the things that that you say on the show is uh, paramilitary or you know a anti white. Hey everybody, this is D with So what am I saying in thirty seconds or less? Oftentimes we plant seeds, but we don't see them grow. All we seem to see are weeds and discouragement and the struggle. But I tell you what, if you continue watering those seeds and doing the things conducive to making those seeds grow, you will get what you want. Those seeds will eventually turn into the things that you originally planted in the first place. All right. Peace.
let's call the spade a spade. Anti-white is not anti-white. And, you know, if I was a white person, mm -hmm. I would be listening, you know, to see if I can learn something about the black community okay. opposed to the negative stereotypes that they think is black people. Okay. You know, so that's what I would be doing. And listen, and, and most people will tell you, yes, it, it does sound like... um like my conversation is unfriendly. I'm just a passionate person. So you'll mm -hmm. know even when we, I mean, you're having discussion um, away from here, I speak like this all the time. Right. I'm right. not one of those lazy, oh gosh, yes. Yeah, or apologetic. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, I'm not going to be apologetic for being who I am. Or I know. mean, and a, and a few of your guests or our people that you do shows with have met me. We uh, When you mm -hmm. first started out with your podcast, we all sat on a panel. Yeah. And we're talking about different things in the city and just in general. Um, and a couple of them asked me a question, like, um, I won't say his name, mm -hmm. but I had on my, I sit with Kaepernick shirt one day, and I oh, came yeah, over, yeah, yeah. and he was like, well, why do you support that, and you support that, and mm -hmm. to me, I kind of thought for a second, I think he really wants me to e explain myself to him, mm -hmm. and he I, I actually wanted me to be apologetic about it, I said, because I, I sit with Kaepernick because what he's doing is right. He's um, speaking out against the uh, injustice that black people go through and police brutality. What's wrong with that? In addition to the national anthem not being all that you it, you, you, uh, you think is packed up to be. Mm -hmm. so, so wait, wait. So, so you're saying that the Kaepernick thing isn't about the national anthem? No. It's about police brutality? Yeah. What? Believe it or not. Don't let Trump uh, let you believe the hype. Yeah, there's, you know? a, yeah, there's a lot of people that think it's the other. It's, it's well, that's just what they do. When I say the, they, uh, this is when I am talking about white people, some, not all. That's what they do. They'll hijack the narrative. a narrative and then try to turn it around and make themselves the victim. Listen, I don't give a damn one way or the other about the national anthem. Uh, and I've rarely even, and I know you, you've been a military man, so that might kind of... Yeah, yeah, I might, I might jump you right yeah, now. Yeah, you know, I know how to fight, too, so... Uh, <laughs> and, and I don't want to be totally disrespectful, so I don't give a damn about the flag, but we know that the flag has never represented black people, True, ever. and we never had a national anthem never. until 1938, I believe it was. Yeah, and, so. and then even when the national anthem, well, I think it was written before then, Francis Key. Yeah. Um, so even before then, uh, when, when Francis Key wrote it, he wrote it because he's pissed off that slaves were not going to be yeah. slaves anymore. Yeah, it, you, you notice that they, they never play the uh, third... The, or the second Second part. or third right. part of the national anthem. Why is that? Well, because he was basically saying, I hope you niggers die. Right. That's pretty much what he was saying. Okay. And so you're mad at us, black people, because we don't want to uh, pay homage to that? Why? Why are you mad? I mean, like, people have drawn a correlation and saying, would you, if they had a song um, talking bad about Jewish people, would you expect for them to like it? But when, that's how it is, though. Yeah. They expect for black people, just get over it. Get over it. This is, you know, if you don't want to be here, go back. Oh, well, I wouldn't uh, uh, express the same thing to you. You're not native to this land either. Right. So take your ass back yeah, where, where you, you come you're from. right. And, and, and leave the money and the riches right, with it. Right, right. Um, you know, we are doing Love, Love, and the Skin I'm In, and people have you know, said great things about the show and where we're going. You know, my mom loves the show because she, she says she gets a nice, good laugh out of it cause it's, <laughs> because it's crazy. It's... Uh, my, and, and I'm gonna give a disclaimer. My mom does not know where I get my chauvinistic uh, uh, leanings because she didn't raise me that way. However, I am a man, so I will not defend women's uh, issues. Like I said, I'm not into the abortion thing. I don't want to talk so about. So you're that. not a feminist. I'm not a don't feminist. That, that, yeah. Doesn't that just T hey, listen, I don't care if people get mad. I'm gonna start having your attitude. F you. No, I'm just yeah. Kidding. Hey. hey. Um, I just don't understand a man who's a feminist. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't get that. Because um, I hear men say that they're feminists. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not, not a, feminist. a feminist. No, I'm a man, so I will never be a feminist. And, uh, and if you're not a feminist, there's something wrong with you. No, then there's something wrong you with you. You don't like women. Because uh, if you want to be free, you have to be willing to fight for it yourself. You can't depend on somebody else to pick, st uh, pick up your issue, which is a problem in our community, because we sit here and we wait for somebody, you say it all the time, uh -huh. for somebody to save us. And that's not always, and that's never going to happen. We've got to save ourselves. Well, just because we've been conditioned to have that happen, mm -hmm. uh, have people save us, um, whether it's, and, and true indeed, it's not just black people who benefit from welfare mm -hmm. and socialism and stuff well, like that, but it's been, you know, given to us, it seems like, right. especially... Well, you know. Well, well, well okay, let, let, let's talk about this. You know, and, and, and we're, I'm talking to you as a mother and a mm -hmm. black woman and all that other stuff, and an educated black woman at, at that. Um, why is it that when another race of cultures or, or culture comes into this country, mm -hmm. 
and they open a business, where is the first place they open their business with? Well, can I ask you this? Do you want better? So you're in, I don't know, um, China, okay? You're going to come to America, mm -hmm. but you need to scope out a place. Right. And so you hear there's places mm -hmm. where you can just go set up shop. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to do any marketing or advertising. The only thing right. you really need to have mm -hmm. is, you know, the alcohol, the hair, what right. we would call in our communities, what? Nigga shit. Nigga shit, right. And you could do well. You could do well. For a yes, year or two you, and then get out of there. And mm -hmm. you ain't even got to treat them right. Right. You could disrespect them. Right. You could sell them. And they will still yes. buy your shop and all that other you stuff You can like sell that. them rotten milk, food, right. um, bad products. Mm -hmm. Cuss them out. Hell, you know what? You can even choke them out. Mm -hmm. And you come back the next day and open up shop. Right. So where would you go? If you heard of a place like that. I would go to that place. Yes. Right. So that's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. But, you know, but, you know, but it goes back to my thing of everybody else could come here, move into our neighborhoods, open up these businesses. They don't live in our neighborhoods. They don't live in our communities. They live out in Orange County or in the, um, in the affluent areas, but their business is right with us, or they live in, like, Woodcrest, Riverside. Right. The nice area of the city. Mm -hmm. And they make all their money here on, on our side, or they're renting to us. Mm -hmm. And we don't open up businesses. In, but try to do that in their neighborhood. Shit. I'm going to go to the Chinese neighborhood and open up uh, my Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Number one, they won't patronize it. Nope. They're going to do it. But they're not supposed to. They're supposed right. to go and do business with their own. But the beautiful thing about what we're speaking about, things are changing. Yeah, they are. They are I did this my show on this last week. Um, the Tune awakening in, of the PM. awakening of the sleeping giant. Black mm -hmm. people are waking up and that mm -hmm. we are not putting up with that anymore. Mm -hmm. We saw um, Jay Morrison and T.I. and a couple of the people in uh, right. Atlanta shut down uh, a, a very restaurant. popular restaurant mm -hmm. called Houston's because they were disrespectful to them. Mm -hmm. And they said no more of our black dollars. And you're starting to see that pop mm -hmm. up. In fact, I'm supposed to be going out to L.A., and my man will let me, and uh, join a boycott of uh, these liquor stores out there of um, Asians who are not treating black people right. Um, Koreans. Be Koreans, Koreans, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so we're starting to see black people wake up, and we're, we're, we're starting to take but, it back. But here's my thing, since we're talking about, uh, you know, that's why I specific by saying Koreans, because uh -huh, you can't okay. just group all Asians in there. Um, yeah, that's an issue, and we have a problem there. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, overall... We keep, to me, it seems like we keep missing the big problem, which is the white man. Well, I don't think we're missing it because the white man all, often lets us know that I'm here and I'm going to do air hell. I mean, we've seen videos after videos after videos of this, so this is not that we're making up, of white men saying that it is our duty to preserve what we've yeah. built. Yeah. Whether it means to keep pe oppressing people, yeah. um, not really getting mad about police brutality, because we are the superior race. This is what they're saying. Yeah, we're yeah. the superior um, race, and we're going to do whatever yeah. we got to do to stay that way. Have you been seeing on YouTube and uh, even on articles on, on the web where uh, police chiefs and uh, lieutenants, people that have been in law enforcement mm -hmm. for years, are being fired for uh, police brutality, uh, racial... Uh, connotations they're finding out well I've, and I've said this for a long mm -hmm. time the Ku Klux Klan all they did was change their sheets in for uh, police uniforms. and they said they were gonna do that yeah um, so uh, a lot of these people are being exposed now that Trump is out it's really exposing a lot of them because they think it's okay right to be like yeah fuck you and your rights and blah right. blah, blah blah and now you know well what it is is and, and this is just my opinion and I, mm -hmm. I and I think it's the opinion of a lot of people the powers that be or let's say white people in general, mm -hmm. are starting to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me for almost 500 years you do the worst things on the planet to a people, and you don't think at some point in time Something's they're going to say, you know what, that's, that's enough. That's it. That's it. I, if that's, I mean, and even if you, whatever system you believe in, whether it's the Bibles, the laws of the universe, karma, you're getting that back. Right. Your, your forefathers may not have gotten that 500 years ago, but you are still reaping the benefits from that. So it's not my saying. That's the way things work. You're going to get back what you've done to people. And so for these people who say, well, get over it. You, you aren't in slavery. You're still being, those people are benefiting from uh, our uh, people. They're bending over, picking the cotton and going through all yeah, They're but, still benefiting. Yeah, but you're not a slave. 
I know I'm not a slave. So what what do you have to do with that, nigga? Because you are benefiting because my people were a slave. Okay, uh, did you see that video? Like, did you share it with me or did I share it with Which you? One? Where the one guy was talking. I, I mean, as a matter of fact, let's take a look at the video right now. For a hundred dollar bill, the winner of this race will take this. A hundred dollar bill. Before I say go, I'm going to make a couple statements. If those statements apply to you, I want you to take two steps forward. If those statements don't apply to you, I want you to stay right where you're at. Take two steps forward if both of your parents are still married. Take two steps forward if you grew up with a father figure in the home. Take two steps forward if you had access to a private education. Take two steps forward if you had access to a free tutor growing up. Take two steps forward if you've never had to worry about your cell phone being shut off. Take two steps forward if you never had to help mom or dad with the bills. Take two steps forward if it wasn't because of your athletic ability, you don't have to pay for college. Take two steps forward if you never wondered where your next meal was going to come from. I want you guys up here in the front just to turn around and look. Every statement I've made has nothing to do with anything any of you have done. Has nothing to do with decisions you've made. Everything I have said has nothing to do with what you've done. We all know these people up here have a better opportunity to win this $100. Does that mean these people back here can't race? No. We would be foolish to not realize we've been given more opportunity. We don't want to recognize that we've been given a head start. But the reality is we have. Now, there's no excuse. They still got to run their race. You still got to run your race. But whoever wins this hundred dollars, I think it'd be extremely foolish of you not to utilize that and learn more about somebody else's story. Because the reality is, if this was a fair race and everybody was back on that line, I guarantee you some of these black dudes would smoke all of you. And it's only because you have this big of a head start that you're possibly going to win this race called life. That is a picture of life, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing you've done has put you in the lead that you're in right now. When I say go, on your mark, get set, go. If you didn't learn anything from this activity, you're a fool. So there it is in a nutshell. It's a video where you see this guy and he's asking people to take two steps forward based on oh, yeah. their benefits yeah. or whatever. And, uh -huh. you, and you have people, and I think a lot of black people need to see that video because maybe we could save one or two. Most of these niggas ain't going to do nothing. But one or two of them, most of those kids have an advantage that had nothing to do with the decisions they made. Right. Well, um, again, I, I mean, that's just the way racism mm -hmm. works. But I think, what, and this is what, you know, on this show, Loving the Skin I'm In, and on my show, Demetri K's mm -hmm. show, what we try to do is just bring awareness to that. They're, I mean, white people, they're never, our problem is this, and you kind of alluded to this um, a minute ago. Mm -hmm. We keep trying to convince white people 
not to hate us. Right. Not to be racist toward us. Please treat us right. I'm to the point where I don't give a damn how you treat me, to be honest with you. Because mm-hmm. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not in the position to where their opinion of me matters, matters. To where I need to. You think it hell? If I was out there, you know, looking for a job and all that, I wouldn't, I'd be like a lot of these black people. I can't say certain things on my right. Facebook. I can't do this. I'm, I'm not going to apologize about who I am. But the problem with us is a lot of times we are trying to appeal to white people. They, we're not bad, you guys. Yeah, and we're, we're not, not yeah, it's we're, not going to happen. Right. So we need to stop focusing on them because we're not ever, ever, ever going to change their minds. But we can focus on our thing as far as group economics. And doing all the stuff that we're supposed to be doing to be who we're supposed to be. Right. And you and you talk about that on your show. So for those guys that are interested, at 3 o'clock on Facebook, look for Demetra K. And if you miss the show, she, she's in syndication and she's on YouTube. And you can see parts of the show uh, on her YouTube channel, Demetra K, as well there. Now, moving on, and I just wanted to bring that up because mm-hmm. a lot of people, you know, talk about it. And, you know, they, they send comments to me and say, I hate that bitch. <laughs> Fuck her and niggerness. Say it to my face. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, and, 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 I, and I know people don't, don't like the language and stuff like that, but it is the internet. The government is trying to control the internet. And, you know, YouTube is now uh, taking down people's what I heard. Uh, thing. Yeah. Facebook is censoring oh, people's yeah. things. But they'll let dead body swing. But, yeah, of black course. dead body swing. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Uh, lynchings and such right. a thing goes on. So you guys got to be cognizant of what's going on. And what we do is we try to put the message out. So moving on, what I want to, what I want to, want to talk about, which is very important, is the Kanika Jenkins psyop. And uh, a quick thing, I want you guys to take a look at this video, because a lot of people say that the mother doesn't have any empathy, and oh, she's probably in a conspiracy. And those are probably good uh, ideas or uh, opinions or whatever. You know, there's no such thing as a bad opinion, mm-hmm. because opinions are just that, opinions. Right. So um, here's a video of... Uh, Miss Jenkins, and I remember this lady was three days removed from Martin. Uh, Martin yeah, Miss Miss, Miss Martin. Jenkins. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Don't talk about Miss Jenkins. Don't talk about Miss Jenkins. <laughs> One of my favorite uh, yeah. Emily color yeah. things, characters, B- uh, Benita Petrell. Yeah. Benita Petrell. <laughs> but uh, Miss Martin, uh, remember she's two days removed from uh, two or three days removed from cancer surgery, so she was recovering. Right. She oh, to, yeah. She had to get out of her bed, mm-hmm. and you're going to see her actually run out of the hotel when the reality that her daughter was discovered, supposedly discovered, in the refrigerator. So take a look at that, and we'll get right back. So there she is. That's horrible. I mean, I and just, I, I really, I, I, I just, I, I thought that was her. you for a second. It would have been me. But see, no, no, that, see, I knew it wasn't you. Because Miss Martin went through the turnstile. You would have gone through the right window. Through that damn window, right? okay? So, and yeah. I, I don't mean to laugh, but. That is painful to watch. It's very, because it's, can you imagine? As a mother, that is the reaction oh, people God. have been wanting to see out of this lady. And that was always my argument. You don't know what that yeah. lady has done or said or, you know, and, and, uh, with the loss of her child. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so so there it is in a nutshell. And it's so sad that we're getting all this stuff in pieces and trying to put it together. However, there has not been a death certificate been found on, on record. So what you're saying record. is, what you're saying? Well, what I'm saying is, uh, you know, uh, knock on wood, God forbid, you lost your mom. How long did it take for the death certificate to be generated? We got it within a week that she passed. Right, but, yeah. the, but, but when she was pronounced uh, deceased, mm-hmm. the doctor immediately, you know, wrote the time of death and cause of death on a certificate and it was filed. Correct. Normally, that's how it works. Yeah, yeah. within within uh-huh. a week. So this lady, this young lady's been dead for a little over a month, and that's public record when somebody dies like that, mm-hmm. and yet nobody can receive. But they ruled what happened to her, right? Uh, they they, they ruled happened? it's an accident, and mm-hmm. that's why no, there's no arrest right now. People say, "Oh, this person should be arrested. This person should be arrested." You guys gotta understand how the how the law works. If they rule it, um, and the mother's not pushing the issue, if they rule it a accident. There's no arrest if it's an accident. Well, that's what they did, right? Right. It's been okay. ruled an accident. The coroner. Now, the mother can push to have an independent autopsy, which I don't know if she did or not, but we haven't heard anything. Right. The mother doesn't seem to be... She's out there protesting the hotel. Still? For whatever reasons. And, I mean, you know, it's very compelling and it's heartbreaking. And, you know, because a lot of people... YouTube's shutting down a lot of people. A lot of people are getting disinterested in the case. And, of course, when it comes to a young black girl, nobody gives a damn. Which I'm surprised that it even went this far. Right, right. right. You know, these activists, Jebediah and all these guys that are, oh, we're here for the people. 
Why the, okay, because you're not getting paid, you're not raising money, why did, what, what happened? Why, why did you leave? Oh, they're gone now? Yeah, he, he, he went on to another Next. situation. Yeah. You know, just nigga shit. So, so everything's about making money. So uh, that video uh, showed, uh, you know, the lady's first reaction. And, uh, and I, again, uh, I do feel something is going on because the, the tapes have been edited. How the coroner could rule an accident mm -hmm. and tapes are being edited to me, that leaves the investigation wide open that this isn't an accident. Something's going on. Okay, now. Okay, so, but uh, I don't want to keep talking about Kanika because that's still an ongoing chase. Uh, shout out to a guy named Straight Drop and everybody else that is still on the case pointing out ele you know, ele ir irregularities in the uh, videos mm -hmm. and making you think about stuff. But I want to bring this up because there's a lot of young black people missing. Right. Okay. And the reason why I say there's something bigger to this going on, and me and you were talking about it earlier, is why this girl and, you know, what, did she have, like, some special blood, blood venom that they had to have? And, you know, here's a girl that, you know, is in Chicago, and she's like any other young chick. I, I told you that she had gang affiliation right. ties, all this stuff. This is what I believe. This is my opinion. So fuck you if you don't like it. Um, our, our views just went up. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, and now I'm going to start chanting tampering that. I just said the F you, so I'm just dropping the F bomb on that. But um, for the people that, for the trollers out there. So she does have gang, in my opinion, gang affiliation and ties. Uh, she goes by the name Martin. She goes by Jenkins. Who knows what's going on with all this confusion? Now, in some of her Facebook pages, she's flashing a lot of cash. And here's what I think. In, uh -oh. in, in my surmise of some of the stuff that's going on, I honestly believe, and I've been in a lot of hotels in my life because I used to fly with the Air Force and we used to stay in hotels. And you always have you know, hookers and people that hang around the hotels and things like that. Why are these girls partying in a hotel room and you come from the south side of Chicago, there's not a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. there, but yet you're a housekeeper at a hotel but you're flashing wads of money. Or because housekeepers make a lot of money? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's what I believe. And I believe the mother was, you know, she's part of that lifestyle too, whatever. Hoenn is a part of the game. It is. When you say the game? The game is of survival. Okay. The game of survival in uh, economically depressed areas. I have yet to go to Compton. Really? Uh, no, no, no. I'm talking oh, about areas oh. like I Compton, said, damn, South Side of Chicago, right. uh, St. Louis, mm -hmm. Houston, all these depressed areas. They have every. Here's the one thing they all have in common. Remember where you go: drugs, prostitution, gangs. I mean, it's all the same narrative. So, okay, you're in Chicago. There's not a lot of opportunities for these young girls. They're affiliating themselves with gangsters. Tattoos all over their fucking faces. No fucking future. <laughs> But this is who they decide to have children with. It would not be beyond me that this girl was being introduced to the whole life by her friends. Now, when you say the whole life, you're not just talking about some just regular everyday tricking. You're talking about uh, like call girl type stuff. Escorting. Got it. Escorting type stuff. Because okay. you know anybody can go out in the streets and sell pussy. Right. I mean, they, they can do that. Um, well, not me. But yeah, but I'm just saying, that's how easy right. it is. Okay, you're at a major hotel by a major airport. Uh, to your uh, truth, uh, white, white men want black women. Absolutely. So here's a young 19-year-old, tight, titties are perky type girl. Kanika's a little bit more attractive than her, some of her friends that are in the picture. Uh, you can sell what? I mean, you see things on TV with back pages and all these girls are getting involved in that. The sex trafficking trade is really big, mm -hmm. especially, you know, out here. Um, so it wouldn't be unfeasible that that's why they were at the hotel. Because remember, the mother had the ticket of her car being in the... Um, they got a ticket or something? Yeah, well, like the parking area uh -huh. on the 6th. Okay. But she went to the party on the 9th. There's a lot of things wrong with this. And if people would piece it together, but I'm, I'm just thinking, speculating, I think she was being introduced to that life and maybe she wasn't with it mm -hmm. and something went terribly wrong and blah, 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 blah. You know, because how do 19-year-old girls 
not just her, her friends, and just you go to all their different pages that are connected, they're all flashing wads of cash. Now, I've worked all my life. I've never flashed money like that. Well, and then I would say, too, you know, a lot of times when people cash a tax check or refund check or a big check or whatever, I, I don't know, it just become prominent in our uh, society now. Our, both of our phones are ringing off the yeah. hook. Maybe that's like no, a... No, that's uh, the Young Church song. Uh, I was about to say, oh, is that what it is? Yeah. I was about to say maybe it's a big time offer somewhere or yeah, something. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, but uh, I, we, we are willing to, to join your association. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I just think, you know, that's just kind of the day and age where people are flashy. They want well, to flash well, everything see, on the, the thing. internet. Here's the thing. That's just how ignorant they are, too. When you flash that money like that, the IRS is watching. And the government is Shit, watching. I'm watching. You got to find out where you at. No. Right. No, no. But you, but you see what I'm saying? Because when you flash that cash and it isn't reflective right. on your, your taxes, they're going to come after you. So you shouldn't be doing stuff like that. But what I'm saying is... You're in the south side of Chicago. You're in this low, depressed area, but you're flashing significant amounts of cash like that. Where are you getting that cash? That's a good question. Yeah. I mean, and I know, now, I don't know personally now. I, I, I heard. I, I heard. Okay. There's a, uh, this thing called um, seeking arrangements. Mm -hmm. And what it sugar is, is it's sugar, yeah, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Sugar daddy's looking for these young, what they call sugar babies. Sure. To take care of them, wine them, dine them, go on vacation. Yeah, I think that's my money. Vienna um, on, on the side. You ain't seen my baby on there. <laughs> <laughs> Come aside, you know. Anyway. Well, it'd been the last time you seen her on there, too. Right, right, you right, just right. seen her on the back of a milk cart right, after that, okay? Right, right. Have you seen this child? Right, right. Uh, yeah, so, um, so that's kind of a popular thing now with these young girls getting on these sites, dating these old cats. You know, for, well, now I ain't talking about dude that got a yeah. you know a mechanic shop up the yeah. street. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this as a mother. Mm -hmm. And this is what I think. Um, would would Kanika's mother be down with that kind of stuff? I think she would. I, you know, Survival I don't even know necessarily, necessarily uh, think it's just her mother. Mm. Um, I think there's a lot of moms. No, exactly. That, in that yeah, like a girl should make yeah. your money. Yeah, make your money. Make yeah. your, it wouldn't be me though. Right. You know, I'll be honest with you. My daughter did have that conversation with me because she has a friend who. Uh, the stripping at a local strip club. What's the name of the? Uh, wait, what's her friend name? Uh, I, no, I, never, never mind. No. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll talk to you about that. After and so that. she went to the strip club because the girls like I'm making all this money and you know she's on Snapchat with all these you know dollar bills and all this stuff. And so she's telling her I'm making a thousand dollars a night sometimes. Oh shit! And so she needed to go check it out. Okay. So she said she went and these dudes are just. Dollar bills. So when I go to the strip club, I take two dollar bills with me. And they be like, "Get your ass." No, I, no, I take two dollar bills and I take with the two dollar bill. I go to the bank and get two dollar bills. Oh, two dollar two. Yeah, the two dollar uh, bills. So they better know what's from you, huh? That's your signature. Look at you. It makes me different. You still giving away the money to merch, regardless of what uh, yeah, oh, increments you give it. Oh, 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 without a doubt. But the thing is, that's what I, I, makes I, me I, 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 here's my two dollar bill. Yes, yeah, so here you go. Ah. Uh, so she was like, her friend's like, girl, yeah, you can do it too, and it's easy. And so she comes home, she kicks the idea to me. I, at first, I was like, nah, you don't want to do it. That's that's just a pass. Well, let me ask you this. When she came to you with that and said, hey, I went and saw my friend, were you shocked? No. Or were you just like, bitch, are you crazy? It wasn't even that, because I know my child. Sure. I know that she wouldn't, ultimately, she wouldn't do that kind no, of no, thing. No, no, but you were just like. Yeah, but I, I get it, you know, mm -hmm. it's and this is true for a lot of people, especially with the inception of the internet. Mm -hmm. I said this not too long ago. The internet is the perfect, it's like a gift to people who like to brag. Yeah. And so a lot of times you see people on the internet, they do it big. You know, they got yeah. these big old stats. And that's probably their rent money. But they're making you think that's, you know. Right. 50 that, cent. I ain't got no money. Right. You mm -hmm. know, and they doing it. You know, I'm at the club. I'm popping bottles. Oh, yeah, we going on vacation. They just in the backyard. But you don't know that. Right. And so... And, and, and you, you might be struggling. Right. And you're like, damn, that'd be nice if I could just come up like that. And so then, as if you're a college girl mm -hmm. and your friend is, you know, making all this money, a college girl who's kind of having mm -hmm. some struggles sometimes financially, sure. Sure. and your friend says you got a nice rack or whatever, come in here, mm -hmm. you'll make some money. You think, okay, well maybe. Mm -hmm. So then she comes to me and, and tells Start me the chocolate. idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I said, well, the, the path, as my dad always says, the path of least resistance, resistance. is always going to take you nowhere you want to go. Mm -hmm. So I said, that's that's, Damn, that's wisdom. Yeah, yeah, it's something you need to think about. Yeah, that's quick money. I said, but I guarantee you right now, your friend is not just shaking her booty. Yeah. And because she got a little booty on top of that. 
So she's not just shaking her little booty and I making like all that booties. money. I'm, I'm talking about yeah. little booty. Yeah, no, I like little booty because all that big ass and stuff. I, I'm not I see even it, talking about just a regular ass. It's a yeah, little booty. Yeah, whenever I see a big ass and these girls that are enhancing their butts and stuff. That's gross. I, I, I wonder how do they wipe their ass and how much tissue do they use? I, but it's that's a lot of ass. I know. Especially if you already got an ass yeah. and you add some more. That's a lot of yeah. ass. It's a lot of responsibility yeah. with all that ass. And, and you guys have been blessed with your mother's genes. So, so I can imagine guys, having no more ass. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. but... So I told us that this girl is doing something more than, you know, a little strange for the change. She's back in that back room. VIP. But she's not telling you that. She's on the internet making you thinking, oh, I've got yeah. these thousand dollars I just tonight. showed up. I have no ass. I have a little booty. And these guys are just dropping money on me for no I mean, I know you're giving away $2 bills, but damn it, you're going to, I mean. Uh, I want something for my $2 yeah, bills. Yeah, I mean, eventually you giving that kind of right. money. So eventually she was like, "Yeah, you're right," because she said she finally did go, and she was like, "Ew, that's dis not to do it." But she watched. Yeah, she, she said, saw what disgusting. really happened. Yeah, she's like, "No, I'm, I'm, thank you. Yeah, I'm yeah. good. I'm, right. I'm gonna be struggling yeah. right here." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, there's, there's got to be more to it because nobody's just gonna get. Especially, okay, we used to have a club here called uh, Deja Vu. And